Hello everyone, this is Goosebumps Godzilla, and currently this will be the second video in the Halloween event. I'm so sorry, you know, it's kind of already almost halfway done with the month, or it is already past halfway done with the month, and this is my only second Halloween event videos, and I haven't really uploaded in like 23 or 24 days. I checked like maybe 10 or 11 minutes ago or so, you know, just how long I haven't been uploading, and I'm really sorry about that, I've just been really busy. Um, don't worry though, I will be having a bunch of Halloween videos coming out tomorrow and the day after that. I'm going to try to upload once every day, or, or maybe multiple videos every day. I know tomorrow I will try to upload maybe two videos at the most. I'm not trying to, you know, like set up something because I may just upload one. I'm not really 100% sure, but I will try to upload two videos tomorrow and basically one every day leading up to Halloween. But anyway, so... Let's get to the main topic of this video, and that is Attack of the jack o the 48th Goosebumps book in the original series. Basically, in this video, I'm going to be talking about how the main antagonist of this story, the jack o or the pumpkin heads, are actually plants. But anyway, with this video, it does come spoilers, really for two Goosebumps books, I would say, and that is Attack of the jack o obviously, since that's going to be the main topic of the video. Very major spoilers for that. And also, we're going to be having some medium to minor spoilers for Stay Out of Base. Mainly, I'm going to be talking about the main antagonist, the plants. I'm not really going to give out any spoilers for the actual book itself, other than the main antagonist, who are already spoiled in the cover art. So yeah, I'm just going to be talking about the powers and weaknesses, the plants, and basically what they do in the story. Not really, you know, like the story, what happens in the story, but some of their attributes and stuff like that. But anyway, that's all the spoilers we're going to be having in this video. So if you really, if you haven't read Attack of the jack o I would not recommend you to watch this video. If you do not want to stay out of the basement spoiled at all, even though cover art already kind of spoils a bit of it, um, then I would recommend you to not watch this video. But anyway, let's get into the theory. And first, let's talk about the plot to the book that the jack o first appeared in, and that is Attack of the jack o so basically, in Attack of the jack o there's our main protagonist, I think her name's Drew. And she has this other friend named Walker, and these two other friends named, um, not Tap Friendly, uh, Shane and Shauna. And so, they're these three best friends, so the main protagonist especially really, really loves Halloween. It's probably, I think, her favorite holiday of the year. And her two other friends really like Halloween as well, but the last two years in a row for Drew, and uh, Walker and uh, Shane and Shauna have been ruined by these two other kids in their neighborhood named Tabitha and Lee. And so basically, they've been pranking them and just really not... The Drew, main protagonist Drew doesn't like them anyways. And especially during Halloween, uh, they've been ruining the last two years. So they really want to get revenge on, obviously, Tabitha and Lee. And so this year, they're trying to plan out a huge prank just to scare them. And so pretty much, um, they come up with a plan for this prank, and they basically say it's got something to do with two pumpkin heads or jack lanterns. And that's pretty much all they reveal, I think, in the end of the story, they, or they do reveal in the end of the story what the prank is, but they don't really reveal it now. And so, basically it cuts to Halloween from what I remember, and they invited Tabitha Lee as part of their prank to go out trick-or-treating with them. Before they go trick-or-treating, though, just a quick note that will be important in the end um, when I'm talking about the end of this story. Basically, it's a huge piece of evidence I'm going to be using in this video, and that is the four people disappearing. So, previously, four people disappeared. So that's all you need to know. Uh, it nearly made um, the main protagonist through not go out trick-or-treating. But anyway, they go out trick-or-treating with Tabitha and Lee uh, along with Walker, but Sh uh, Shane and Shauna actually do not show up. And later on, they meet two pumpkin heads. And so obviously, Tabitha and Lee, since Shane and Shauna are not present, think that, um, Tabitha, yeah, uh, not Tabitha and Lee, Shane and Shauna are the jack o -lanterns. These two, like, giant jack o -lanterns actually can fire fire out of their mouth and stuff like that. Anyway, so these jack o -lanterns tell them that they can take them to a better place to go trick or treating. So they follow them to this better place. And there they get tons of candy and stuff like that. And the main protagonist and all of them are getting loads of candy again. And they're having a super fun time um, when, you know, it starts to get late. And so they basically, you know, want to head home. But the jack-o'-lanterns start forcing them to keep on trick-or-treating. 
saying that they'll make them trick or treat forever. And so eventually this leads to uh, the climax in which uh, basically the whole neighborhood that was called the better place basically is just filled with all these jack o' lanterns that basically surround the main protagonist Walker. Or not the main protagonist's name is Drew and Walker and also Tabitha and Lee. They bring out two pumpkin heads for Tabitha and Lee that they sit on their heads basically causes them to run away into the woods um, in fright, obviously. And so this actually was all part of the, their Halloween prank in that was mentioned earlier. And basically, how it was pulled off is basically, it turns out, this is kind of the part where I didn't really like Attack the Dragon. It's a pretty good book until this indie part where it is revealed that uh, Shane and Shauna are actually aliens. Everyone in the neighborhood in that area are aliens and basically they were really desperate to scare Tatha and Lee this year uh, not yeah Tatha and Lee and so that's why they um, basically revealed their alien selves to Tatha and Lee basically just to scare them just because they were desperate about this which is a little odd um, I'll talk about that later on in the video but basically as a twist ending though uh, the, when the jack-o-lantern says that they are actually responsible for the four people disappearing that I mentioned previously. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the twist ending. It's not that good of a twist ending. I thought the twist ending could have been a bit better, but it was a pretty big twist, the fact that these jack o lanterns were aliens. I didn't really like that one too much, but still, um, in the end of the story, they reveal supposedly that these jack o lanterns are aliens and eat human flesh. And so that's pretty much the entire plot for Attack of the Jack Lanterns. And as a whole, I would say it's um okay book. I just really do not like the alien part. Um, and so pretty much uh, due to me mentioning that, we are going to be talking about though the alien part in this video. And right now, I think I'm going to disprove the fact that these guys are aliens and are actually plants. And the first thing that really throws me off for the jack lanterns for being aliens is the fact that they eat humans. Uh, so first I'm going to start out with some minor pieces of evidence that I found. Like the first thing is that they are aliens, you know, and so basically they would live on their planet and most likely their planet would have all their natural resources. This is a minor piece of evidence mainly because of the fact that, you know, while they, they could, you know, have run out of their natural resources or something, Still doesn't really make make that much sense that they only eat human flesh. They eat no other human foods, as revealed at the end of the story. And so they do not eat human flesh at all. Or no, they do eat human flesh, and that's only it. Again, maybe they ran out of their national re or natural resources on their planet. That's why they come to Earth. But, I don't know. That just didn't really make that much sense to me. The fact that they would just all go down to Earth and just eat unhuman flesh when they should have their natural resources on their planet. But that was just a minor piece of evidence that I found. A bigger piece of evidence is the fact that they would settle with the humans. Because that really doesn't make that much sense either. They could, you know, possibly go in the UFOs, kidnap humans and stuff like that, but if they stay on Earth, they have their identities being risked and basically they could start like an alien human war, stuff like that. Also, the jack o lantern could most likely develop relationships with other humans, which could lead to some trouble. Kind of like what you see in the Goosebumps Horror Town event for Attack of the Jack Lanterns, or at least the video I saw. And so, you see what I mean? It just doesn't really make that much sense why they would ra waste the resources, you know, buying a house, um, you know, buying all this stuff just so they could, you know, live on earth and then eat humans and also one of my biggest nitpicks about them you know not you know or eating people and basically proving that they don't eat people is that only four people disappeared as you can see in attack of the jack lanterns there's a whole neighborhood of these people probably even more than that in this area because you know uh shane and shauna live in this other neighborhood and they're aliens as well most likely live with a bunch of other aliens in that neighborhood and as a whole, only four people disappeared during the, or uh, at least in the last 10 years or so. Be or not 10 years, but in the last couple of years. Because 
you know, these guys supposedly live off of human flesh. There's a whole neighborhood of these people here, and only four people go missing. And it's pretty much guaranteed that these people didn't go missing in the previous years because of the fact that the main protagonist's mom never mentioned it. So, the main protagonist's mom in Attack the Jacqueline's just now, you know, seems to have noticed that people are disappearing. If there are, you know, as many jack o as there seems to be in Attack the jack o then more people should disappear than just four people, and there should be more people disappearing. Or not, you know, what, you know what I mean, on a basis. Because, again, it doesn't really make that much sense for them to just be in the town. They live here full time. It's not like they stay in this one area one night and then they leave, kind of like in um, you know, the Goosomes episode for Attack the jack o In this one, they stay in this one area pretty much for a long time, and basically for the last six years, or I would say, or at least the time that the main protagonist started trick-or-treating, uh, the parents have not noticed anyone disappearing until now. So it doesn't really make that much sense for the humans to be the natural resource of the jack o lanterns stuff like that and again just really doesn't make that much sense as a whole and then another thing that really doesn't make that much sense is the design of the jack o -lanterns. so in attack of the jack o obviously the pumpkin heads alien design this is their alien design in the book universe their alien design is a jack o lantern head and with a dark robe from what i remember that could be just based off the TV episode in the Tim Jacoba's cover art. They do have a jack o' lantern with um, you know clothes on, stuff like that, normal. But um, from what I remember, they have this dark robe on, and basically they spew fire out of their mouth and stuff like that. Um, it doesn't really make that much sense again for their design to be a jack o' lantern theme as well, because you know jack o' lantern is kind of a human thing. You know, you know what I mean. Not. It's just, it's just really weird that. You know, it just so happens that jack o' lanterns, uh, the jack o' lanterns from Tag Jack o' lanterns, just so happens to look like, you know, jack o' lanterns on human space. You could say that that isn't their true alien form and stuff like that, um, but in the, you know, obviously TV episode universe is not in the same universe as the book universe, but in the book they never actually do transform into their real form. Instead, keep on their jack o' lantern forms. You could say in Goosebumps War Town, they do have a jack o' lantern that has a, you know, a alien form. But he basically wears the jack o' lantern thing as a helmet instead of him transforming into that. And also, that alien is incapable of transforming into human, uh, which the jack o' lanterns can do, or the jack o' lanterns that we've seen attack the jack o' lanterns. Meaning that they're most likely two different species from the one in Horror Town to the one in the book. And so, uh, it seems like their natural design would be the jack o' lanterns. Also, another piece that is to prove that that would be their natural design is, you know, that if they wanted to make it more scary for Tab Finley, they most likely would not choose a jack o' lantern design. Because, you know, again, jack o' lanterns is sort of a human thing and kind of disprove their evil monsters and stuff like that that they would make them lead to believe because of the fact that they are jack lanterns and stuff like that and again it, it'd be kind of weird for an alien species or some monster to just so happen to look like a jack lantern without any reason at all and also there's a fact that they can transform into a human also kind of strange um, that they are able to transform from a monster or an alien to a human also really doesn't make that much sense just as a whole because they're an alien species and it seems like from what we see in the book that could, they can only transform from alien to human so how could they you know transform into uh and human when they're an alien species they don't even know what humans look like maybe they can just transform into anything they want but again when they do something scarier for tabitha and lee than the jack lantern again and also, um, one thing I forgot to mention as evidence to prove that these guys don't eat humans also is the cover art made by Tim Jacobus. In that cover art, you actually see one of the jack o' lanterns, or all of the jack o' lanterns, actually holding bags of candy. When in the book, the main protagonist specifically says that, you know, these guys do not 
eat candy. That's one of the great things about going trick or treating with aliens is that they don't eat candy and stuff like that. The main protagonist explicitly said that. And the fact that uh, basically uh, five jack o I believe, or six counting the dog, but the dog isn't holding a trick or treat bag. All of these jack o are holding trick or treat bags, meaning they most likely eat humans. It's not like they're uh, do not eat humans due to them carrying human food and stuff like that. And so I th and it's not like they're being undercover or anything, because if they reveal their jack o' lantern form, then that could give it away. So explicitly says one of the jack o' lanterns in the story that they were desperate this year to get revenge on Tabitha and Lee. So they revealed their uh, true forms, most likely. And so that is kind of why they have. Uh, so they're not obviously trying to be undercover holding the trick-or-treat bags since they're showing their true form, meaning that they most likely are able, or, you know, are able to eat human food. And so, yeah, that's pretty much... Oh, yeah, I do have one more piece of evidence to prove that these guys are not aliens, and that evidence is actually um, from one scene in the story from one of the pranks uh, used by Tyler Thinley. In that scene, they are basically having these robbers break into the house. And so basically it's a, a little prank made by these kids during Halloween party. But basically these two teenagers dressed up as robbers break into the house, make everyone stand down on the ground. And that, I would think, is a scene where um, Shane and Shauna would transform into an alien. Obviously, since they eat humans, they most likely are more powerful than humans and stuff like that. They're not really that vulnerable. So why wouldn't they just transform to the jack land form? Sure, it would, uh, you know, basically reveal their true identities to everyone in the room. But first off, no one would most likely believe them. And second off, um, they revealed their true identities um, because of a prank. They need to get on Tabitha and Lee, and they call that a desperate situation. And so when someone's robbing the house and stuff like that, I would also call that a desperate situation as well if I was one of the jack o and I would transform to the jack o unless um, they were somewhat vulnerable to something. Not saying they are, maybe they are vulnerable to something, but if they are as powerful as it seems like and they're not vulnerable to most anything due to them being portrayed as, um, you know, firing fire out of their mouths and stuff like that, and they're an alien species and... Uh, super smart it seems like I would guess since they traveled to Earth and stuff like that it would seem that the jack lands are actually you know in that scene they should transform into the jack lands unless they have some sort of weakness but again I'm not really sure what that would be and so I think as a whole I've disproven the fact that these guys are plants and this video is already reached to 18 minutes long. Uh, super sorry about that. I haven't even gotten to the evidence to prove that these guys are plants. I'm not going to try to rush through, but I will try to quickly go over the evidence. I think that these guys are actually plants instead of aliens. So basically, the reason I think the plants, uh, these guys are plants instead of jack lanterns is first off, the plants that you see in Stay Out of the Basement, these living plants, are almost identical, if not very similar, to the jack o -lanterns. First off, um, it would make sense for them not to transform during that robbery scene that I was talking about, mainly because of the fact that these guys are actually kind of weak. Uh, they are kind of your average human strong, but like if they get punched or something, then they most likely, you know, will get damaged pretty bad after all um, in the Stay Out of the Basement story. Uh, the dad in the story, or, or the plant person, was easily killed off um, and stuff like that. But that was just a very minor piece of evidence, some huge piece of evidence to prove it. Also is the fact that they transform from human to plant um, in Attack of the jack o So you can see, you know, they're pumpkin heads, and they transform from human to this pumpkin head. And basically, that is also very similar to the, you know, plant dad from Stay Out of the Basement because... He can also transform from human to plant. You can see this in the Tim Jacobus cover art, where he's basically a plant face, and he's just a living plant. And, you know, in the Stay Out of the Basement cover art in the original one, I'm not really sure who did that one, 
it was someone else other than Tim Jacobus. I'm not really sure his name. Um, but basically, also in that scene, he was uh, had the plant dad had a plant form, and also in Goosebumps Horror Town, the plant dad also had a human and plant form, meaning that the plant dad most likely can transform from human to plant at will. And it's very similar to the jack lanterns who basically do the same thing. Because keep in mind, pumpkins are plants, and these pumpkin heads are basically pumpkins with faces. And it doesn't seem like the pumpkin heads are just carved out, you know, due to the mouths moving and stuff like that. So it would seem that these are also basically plants with faces, very similar to what you see maybe in the Tim Jacobus cover art and stuff like that. So these guys are very similar, and also I think these guys are responsible for those four missing people, um, but I don't think they ate them. Instead, I think they kidnapped them, which is actually something that the plant dad did in Stay Out of the Basement as well. And we have even more confirming evidence to prove this from the branded Dorman cover art from the glass, not classic, uh, classic Goosebumps reprint, in which you can see basically these pumpkins that seemingly are alive growing in this patch. And they are not attached to a body or anything, but they're basically alive on their own. Which ultimately really disproves the fact that these guys are aliens since they're, you know, growing in a garden. And it further proves the fact that these guys are plants due to the fact, as I said before, that these guys are basically attached to vines and are growing and they are alive. And that's kind of, from what I remember, very similar to the plant dad from Stay Out of the Basement. Mainly because he started out as a plant uh, with human DNA or something, and he started growing and growing and growing until he became a, you know, a plant person. And I think that is a very similar situation in Attack of the Jack Lanterns. And so that's a bunch of evidence right there, uh, as you can probably tell. But then there's also evidence from another Goosebumps story, and that is actually um, what's it called? Uh, uh, Headless Halloween. So it's really just the cover art that I'm seeing, but basically in the Headless Halloween cover art, it's a very minor piece of evidence, but in that cover art you can actually see these pumpkins that look sort of alive. Um, you know, it's kind of hard to tell if they are actually alive due to this being cover art and it's still and you can't tell if they're moving or not. But these pumpkins seemingly look alive, but not only that, but you see this green hand reaching out of the ground. So, um, in Headless Halloween, without getting into too much spoilers, I'm not really going to spoil this one. Uh, zombies aren't really in there. There is one scene uh, that they advertise at the back of Headless Halloween that does feature zombies in there. But it's a very small piece of the story, and the hand really, from what I see, doesn't look too zombie-like. And actually looks instead more like the hand from Stay Out of the Basement. So this is an extra huge piece of evidence that I think the pumpkins are rising out of the ground, and that is another huge piece of evidence. But also in the Headless Halloween American cover art as well, you can see these uh, this guy, I think his name's Norband, not 100% sure, but he's basically in this pumpkin field. And in that pumpkin field, there is a pumpkin that is already carved. And so again, this could be that someone carved it in, already in the field, but it you know, it doesn't really make that much sense for someone to carve a pumpkin, you know, in the middle of a field. And it would rather make more sense, I think, for that pumpkin uh, to actually be alive. And so, yeah, that's pretty much all the evidence I have today in this theory. Um, and so, pretty much tell me what you think in the comments section below. Do you think the jack-o'-lanterns are plants, or do you think they're aliens? Or tell me what you think in the comment section below. Do you think they're completely, you know, something completely different? Tell me what you think in the comment section below. Really sorry about the huge delay in videos. And also, I'm kind of rusty due to me not uploading in about 23 days. So, sorry if the quality of this video is not as good as usual. Um, I will try to improve on that. And hopefully tomorrow, I will try to make two videos in one day. Hopefully. And the day after that, I'll try to upload one. And then one after that. And stuff like that and anyway guys that's the end of the video i hope you enjoyed and happy halloween